So we've seen how MIDI will automatically stretch itself to any new tempo and time signature that you enter, and that's because MIDI is nice and flexible and it's very easy to work with. You can also do the same with audio because, of course, a lot of the time you'll be working with either loops or pre-recorded audio. And that's slightly more complex uh, to stretch than MIDI, but it's not that difficult. And the way it works is like this. Here I've got a project which is at 90 BPM. So it sounds like this. And these are audio files, right? Imagine that what I wanted to do is halfway through this loop here, I wanted my audio to slow down. Now, once upon a time, that would have been virtually impossible to do without bouncing it out and really, really messing about with it. But in Cubase, you can actually do it relatively easily. And the way it works is like this. For each audio part that you want to be able to stretch, you need to basically switch it into musical mode. And what that means is Cubase essentially renders it elastic. So if I double click on the first of my loops here to open it in the audio editor, I can switch it onto musical mode by just pressing this button here. When I do that, you can see it gains a tiny little sort of W icon to show that it's in musical mode. And because that's a shared clip, all the other clips have also been made in musical mode. Do the same with these other audio clips, like this. Then I want to be able to stretch, switch them onto musical mode. Same with the piano part. Now initially nothing will change because I haven't actually told it to do anything yet. I'm going to move my tempo track up here so that I can see a bit more easily what's going on. So at the moment it sounds the same. But if I spin back a bit and I open my tempo track, here's my loop shown in purple. What I can do is I can essentially draw in a tempo change. Now I can either draw it as a jump, so it will change straight from one tempo to another, or I can draw it as a ramp. I'm going to stick with a ramp and I'm going to say with my pen tool that when it gets to bar 45, I want it to start slowing down. So I will enter a value there, make sure it's correct. It's actually, I've messed that up a bit. I want to make sure that's 90. And then remember snapping applies here as well. So I could do it freely by turning off snapping, or I could do it to a very fine degree by snapping to something like 1 16th. Bars is okay though here for me. So I'm going to change it, say, by bar 47. I want it to have gone down to, what's that going to be? 60 BPM. And now when I play back, you should hear the audio stretches. Of course, it's starting to artifact a little bit because I've stretched it a long way. When it spins back to the start of the loop, it goes back to its original tempo. And of course I can play with that by, for example, I could decide I actually want the whole thing to be slightly faster at the start. So I could take that up to 105 BPM. If I want to put in a specific value, I could enter it here. So I might say 102. I would actually have to go back to the beginning as well and make sure that at the beginning it was also set to 102, or it creates a ramp. So there we go. Then spin back to where I was and maybe change this so it's not dropping quite so far, dropping to 79. And when I play back, you can see the tempo changing and you can hear it. Of course, if I turned off the loop, it would stay at that tempo because the tempo track governs everything that comes afterwards. So unless I change this tempo value further on, it's going to stay at that lower BPM. Now, of course, you can hear that because I didn't stretch 
this clip here, that stayed at the same original tempo, so I'd have to put that into musical mode and then that should follow as well. So that's a really cool way to basically control the tempo of an entire project very easily. Everything that's underneath this tempo track will change its tempo. MIDI will do it automatically. Audio, you have to pop it into musical mode, but that's very easy to do.